make fun of Cornell. <clears throat> NYU is so beneath That's you. So mean. See, this is more accurate. Hi, I'm Morgan. And I'm Kennedy. And we went to Dartmouth College. Hi, I'm Katie, and I'm a senior at Brown University. Hi, my name is Alish. I went to Columbia. Hey, I'm Sienna, and I'm a rising senior at Harvard College. Oh my gosh, of course, of course, okay. Oh, this is, oh, I just saw this movie for the first time. I'm gonna tell all of you at Harvard why I'm gonna make an amazing Hell yeah, she is. <laughs> I feel like this is accurate. This is what the admissions department looks like. 4.0 from CULA, and she got a 179 on her LSATs. Did she say she got a 179 on her LSAT? That's like unheard of. <laughs> this is true, you have some people who are like rooting for you and others that aren't. Welcome to Harvard. Oh gosh. I hope the admissions committee looks a lot more diverse than that. I mean, that is kind of this Harvard stereotype. It's like a bunch of old white guys in the admissions department. And I'd say like the holistic review of the admissions. I think that's something that's very prided upon by like any Ivy League admissions board. At least at Harvard, we have the right to see our application after we've been admitted and see our interviewers comments on us and also the admissions officers comments. Columbia, Columbia, Columbia. That's her first mistake. She's wearing high heels in New York, as if you can walk more than two blocks in this. I'd come and watch your lacrosse game, so if you can make sure- One thing this gets wrong is the idea that anyone would go watch a lacrosse game. But yeah, we were notoriously bad at sports. No but for some reason, we were the best at medieval sports, like archery, fencing, or anything that looked like it involved a torture device. We're celebrating. We just got the most amazing apartment ever. We would totally approve pre-war doorman. Who can, can afford a doorman in college? I know. Who can what do you think about falafel? Ew. Isn't that the kind of food paralegals eat? I never thought I'd <laughs> on the Upper West Side. Justice for paralegals. Oh my God. Are you transferring to Columbia? Oh, I hope so. NYU is so beneath you. Oh, the elitism. Ah, <gasps> that's so mean. We have definitely encountered people who like look down at non Ivy League schools. You know, I think there's always gonna be people who feel like they're better than other people for all kinds of reasons, Ivy League included. When I first went to Brown, I did have a culture shock of like the crazy elite populations that do run in those circles. There were a few people here and there that dressed like this and threw money around. And a lot of those kids were part of a house called St. A's. Allegedly, one of the things you had to do to get in is buy a plane ticket to China and then burn it. And this clip is shot on the same block as that house. Ooh! Oh my God, the Van Winkle Gates. That's way better than what it looks like in real life. <laughs> I got this at the school store. It's an M Harvard does sell like art prints at the museum. Yeah, they violated a lot of dorm guidelines by hanging like a literal glass framed thing on the wall that you will get fined. Stewie, I can't use this, it'll be cheating. Oh, fine. Listen, I'll be out on the quad. Yeah, people hanging out on the quad or the green was something that everyone did. And I was ball. never feeling to play spike ball or toss down a frisbee. Huge ultimate frisbee scene at Brown. <laughs> Brown is often dubbed as the chillest Ivy. Honestly, I take that title in stride. I'm very grateful to Brown's culture for chilling me the frick out. I would say the work environment at Harvard is very like work hard, play hard, maybe more emphasis on the work hard. In my experience, cheating is still taken very, very seriously. You would get suspended for like up to three terms at Dartmouth if you plagiarized. Oh my gosh, the social network, of course. Those girls are all going to a final club. They're probably from like BU or another Boston school. Like, I feel like in movies, everyone that goes to Harvard, it's like either this bookish brainiac who's like him coding away on a Saturday night or it's his friend who's in the back smoking weed. There's no in between. This is so accurate. Like the guys at the door ushering some of the girls in. All the guys in suits, so accurate. Such bougie parties. Have never been invited to one of those. Everyone in this movie is a lot hotter than their real life equivalents. I need you. I'm here for you. No, I need the algorithm used to rank chess players. Harvard people and some algorithm. They always want some algorithm from you. So final clubs at Harvard are really a different breed. They're one of the most controversial things I think about Harvard. There is a huge history of these being 
very elitist, very privileged, very white. This does kind of point to an interesting thing about these schools. They have this aura of being exclusive, and then even within them, there are levels of exclusivity. So you might see people like Mark who feel left out, even though they're the most, you know, prestigious school ever. I seem to lack the basic Columbia, understanding right? yeah. that my peers just intuitively grasp. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Her name? I don't know anyone here. who wears heels on campus. That's badass. Go, girl. How many people in college do you know that met randomly like that? Never saw each other same. on the quad and were oh, like, Alex? you're cute. Can I get your number? I know zero. Beautiful. Oh, are they going to be making out in the library sex? Yep. <gasps> Too soon, bro. Corny. Corny. <laughs> One of the biggest misconceptions people have about the Ivy League is that everyone's super smart. There are a surprising number of really dumb people at these schools. Someone might be really adept at one or two things, but then totally inept at everything else, namely social cues, emotional intelligence. I know it seems like kind of contrived, but I know at least like three people who have been rejected in the rain at Columbia. There definitely is, I think, some accuracy to like the adorable stereotype or whatever. The girl's very dressed up though, which I love, um, but not a lot of people at Harvard would dress up. Yeah. But I think also back in the day, a lot of black people were told by their parents to dress up for stuff like school, the airport, maybe it was like a cultural thing. It's so weird to see so many black people represented in Ivy League school, because I feel like when you think about Ivy League schools, I think like white people. <laughs> Yeah, three black people there. Skull and Bones is a secret society that some of the students are allowed into. Oh, this is intense. Very swanky. But I guess they have the budget for it, because it's Yale. <laughs> I'm not gonna say nothing. I'm not gonna say anything. I'm not gonna say nothing. This is very cultish. Are they gonna like burn each other or something? I, I, I get, I'm getting bad vibes. Are they gonna brand them? Definitely on the ass cheek, yeah. I knew it! Do you know how long you have to hold something down on your skin to actually make a brand? Like, if it's a secret, then why would you brand your wrist? Right after? Oh, I felt that. Besties for life. I've heard that the presidents that have graduated from Yale, like a lot of them have been part of these secret societies. They are still operating, but like their recruitment processes are very, very low key. I've heard that, but like, obviously I've never been recruited. So Harvard doesn't really have, as far as I know, secret societies. Like they have the final clubs and those are really out there. Like I feel like every society is really just like a social club where you can hang out and drink, kiss a bay or two. At Dartmouth, when you graduate, everyone from their different society like gets a cane, so then you can flex and be like, I was in this society. I'm it's you the final society. social flex. Okay, Animal Hi House, Dartmouth. Dartmouth Meyer, Omega membership champ. Larry Kroger. This Very Dartmouth. I would think that Dartmouth is like a more legitimate school than the school portrayed in this movie. So they're rushing. Why are men at Dartmouth portrayed as being ugly? Is it true? I know. It's funny because Dartmouth is portrayed, like especially in Animal House, as very legacy familial things like that. But everywhere else talks about it as rough around the edges and kind of raunchy. See, this is more accurate. Is he peeing? Oh! Come on in. I love how they're in suits. The vibes are already better here. I feel like it looks like how GDX Osayu looks like really dirty. The random keep out signs, those were everywhere. This is very accurate. This feels a lot more accurate. <laughs> so Animal House is based on a frat at Dartmouth. Allegedly. Allegedly called AD. That's like no longer a fraternity. Freshman year of college, I was dating a guy who was in AD before it got shut down. And um, he really talked about it as being like the most fun house on campus. Like it was the it was the craziest. They did brand people. I did see a few brands. I used to hear they had a budget for drugs. Yeah, not the California kind, the other kind. Yeah. I wouldn't say that clip is super accurate for Harvard. It's more like stand around and talk. I like this one. I think they hit a lot of things on the head. Everybody likes to make fun of Cornell and the Ivy Leagues. I love Cornell. I feel so bad for Cornell students who are fans of The Office. I feel like they really ragged on them with this guy. People who went to Ivy's were like this though. They're all just mad. Like protective over their like alma mater, kind of living in their college days a little bit still. You know who you are. 
And it does also take me back to when I was doing interviews. It's a very, very nerve-wracking process. Like, honestly, the interviewers are kind of arbitrary. I do know that a lot of them will give comments, though. Sometimes people have gone back and read what their interviewers said, and some of them would make comments on their appearance. The only interview I remember is my Cornell interviewer, and it was a very pleasant experience. So very, very inaccurate representation going to go to the vastly superior Dartmouth. It's true, it's true. That's an unpopular opinion. I feel like school rivalry is really real. No one is ashamed of going to Columbia, but I don't think we have the sort of pride that someone who went to Ole Miss has. Oh, there's like no school pride. <laughs> I think there is inherent like deep individual pride, but I'd say as a collective, it is a little harder to rally the troops. I would say school pride at Harvard is like really low. I mean, when people ask you where do you go to school, Harvard people will not say Harvard. I feel like at Dartmouth, people are less ostentatious about where they went because sometimes people just don't even know what Dartmouth is. But amongst each other, it's like a cult. I think the main thing is that if you have a large group of people, they are going to resemble any other large group of people. A lot of these clips were very like male oriented, white oriented, even the Ivy League institutions, they are trying to break that trope. So I do think we're making a lot of progress, but there's definitely also still a lot of work to be done.